Um, Colby's an 18-year-old who is somewhat estranged from his family, though he does live at home. He tells you that he feels isolated, lacks meaning in his life, and is having suicidal thoughts. He adds that he's demoralized by a poor, what he calls a porn addiction. Maybe that's not as hard as it sounds, but um, I'm curious. What could you do to care for Kobe's needs, to feel safe, connected, and confident? He's just told you he's suicidal. Do you know what a lot of people do when they hear that someone's suicidal? They do this, whether like in real life or, or it's just sort of communicated. They go, okay, stay right there. I'll be back. We need to go get some help. Um, you know, the ambulance comes or they're in a hospital before you know it. That kid isn't going to talk about his suicidal thoughts next time. I mean, you have to get help. But the most important thing to do in that moment is to make him feel safe for sharing something vulnerable and shameful and to say, tell me more. I want to hear and I can hear. If it's someone you love who's telling you they feel this way, you're kind of freaking out inside. But you have to be able to sit with them and say, keep going. That's okay. Thanks for telling me. How long have you been having suicidal thoughts? What do you think about? How intense is it? And what keeps you going? Why are you telling me? I'm so grateful you're telling me, but, but what can I do? Right? To keep going. You've, 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 you make it safe. You connect, which is, I just know how much I care about you. And then you go to confidence, which is, collaboratively, what should we do? Or if you think they're safe, I think you're going to figure this out. Give yourself some time, right? So that's, that's what I would say, even with the, you know, the porn addiction, same thing. Thank you for telling me. I want to hear more. It's okay. What you've just told me doesn't distance us at all. It brings me closer. That's what you need to communicate. And then allow them to see what they can come up with to start working towards solutions for their own problem. But if you back away and run and try to fix everything, sometimes I tell people, you know, the, the, the two most common cognitions of someone who's depressed. I don't, has, have you guys ever had someone that's really close to you that's been depressed? I know we hear about it. I'm curious. Raise your hands if, if you've had someone really close, really close to you. Oh, wow, that's even more than I thought. Um, what they're most com commonly thinking is either um, I'm broken in some way, and two, that I'm a burden on people around me. My life is a burden. And if you run in that moment that they've told you something to fix it, what have you accidentally communicated? That you need to be fixed and that I'm the one that apparently has to do it. You've just, well-intentioned, you've reinforced what they feared. People can do more um, than we think. And one of the interesting secrets in life is that when you know, go back to that example where you came home and you were frustrated by your, your day. If your significant other did what they needed to do to be empathic, to make you feel safe and loved and seen and express confidence, you know this. Do you know what you would do after that conversation? You'd say, ah, oh, it's okay. Thanks for listening. I'll figure it out. You, you really, people do that. When, when you, I've seen this. When you meet those needs, they solve their own problem in remarkable ways that surprise you, even, even kids.